Welcome back to the SWI channel. If you remember when Dan built this fence, whom some of you guys thought was drunk, we'll cover that here in just a second. Built this fence, you guys had a lot to say about what we did here. And I wanna talk a little bit about that and go over some of the things. Did we screw some stuff up? Did we get it right? Is this fence gonna fall over tomorrow? Let's get into that right now. So I wasn't here when Dan did all this, but I've seen all the comments and boy, you guys on YouTube, you're a fickle bunch, let me tell you what. So let's talk about some of the things you tore us up on. As you'll notice, this stuff right here, this is what we like to call spicy ground maker. So we have to be a little bit cautious about what we do here. So this line here is for fiber. This is telephone communication. This is electric. Somewhere I think down there I saw gas. Anyhow, there's a lot going on right here in this area. So one of the things you guys had a lot of comments on is, how dare you call it a no dig fence and then you dug a hole? Well, right here, there's a conflict. We need to be very cautious about how we dig around this. Anyhow, we dug this one hole. Yes, we dug a hole. I apologize, we should have said mostly, even though there's like 60 posts on the job, this one hole, plus the gate post, which we'll talk about in the front, were dug, and that was for safety. Now, the thing I find incredibly funny is some people are killing us for digging the one hole so that we could be safe, and other people are telling us how dangerous we were by pounding all those posts in the ground. So let's talk about that. We did get locates on everything. We knew where the utilities were. That's our responsibility as a contractor to call at least 48 hours in advance, and which we did, and you can still see some of the marks. The white mark right here is where we told the locators where our fence was gonna be going. So they knew what to locate. As you can see, there's still paint marks right here, so we know that we have some communication, which is orange, and we're always being cautious of that stuff. Some people thought that we were putting people's lives in jeopardy because we were just willy-nilly throwing posts in the ground, pounding them in there, and who knows what was gonna happen and how dangerous that is, and like OSHA should be out inspecting us. Trust me, we know where the stuff is, we've done our job. And does that mean that there's never gonna be a utility strike? No, but we're doing the best we can and we are giving them the space that they require. In Wyoming, that is two feet. As long as we're two feet off of that utility, then we're good to pound or dig or whatever we need to do. But we have to maintain at least two feet off the center line to our, to our excavation or in this case, the pounding. So we gave them two feet. And we have a locator ourselves, so if we have any worries that maybe their locates are off, we can actually double check that, and sometimes we will double check that so that we can pinpoint a little bit closer. The thing is, is we give them two feet, they're actually a lot more accurate than that as long as they take the time. Sometimes they get in a hurry and they're not very accurate, and that's when we usually have a strike is because they weren't very accurate with their locates. Even though we gave them two feet, it turns out their utility was further off. So. We were very safe in all this. We knew that the utilities were, and we were never putting anybody's life in danger. Um, and it is no more dangerous to be pounding posts in this ground than it would be to be augering a hole. I am, I am a little bit shocked that this fence has been up for probably two months now, and I'm honestly, I'm blown away. The thing is still somehow standing because I know some of you guys thought that that would never work in our area. And guess what? Yep, still standing, still strong. And if you know anything about Wyoming, we do have just a smidge of wind here. The saying goes that that's because Nebraska sucks and Utah blows. I don't know if that's true or not. I probably just alienated a whole bunch of you people. I'm sorry. That's just the saying we have in Wyoming. Um, I can neither confirm nor deny that. But we do have a ton of wind and anybody that's driven down I-80 in Southern Wyoming knows how much wind we have. So this thing will get tons of abuse. And as you can see, there is no trees, no houses, nothing this way. So all of our wind comes from the north and the west. Uh, that is the west, this is the north right here. So this thing will see a ton of wind just because there's no trees, no shelter, no other houses back here to help break that up. So uh, we do this all the time. It'll be plenty strong. One of the things I will give you guys credit for is this was the first time we'd really fully tried this method. We kind of messed around with it and dabbled, but we were not 100% proficient, what I would call proficient. We understood the technique, but not proficient. And one of the things you guys have said a lot is you should have brought out a string and that would have been a lot faster. And I 100%, that's one of the places I think you guys got it right. When I watched the video after watching Dan do this, that was the first thing I noticed is that I thought he should have brought out a string and that would have made that faster. However, he's used to doing things the other way, which we have plenty of videos on our site about how to eyesight stuff in. And when we're setting in concrete, that's actually to use a string is much slower for us and we can be more accurate 
without the string than with the string. However, on this particular method, I would absolutely agree that using a string to drive your post and then setting another string where you're gonna set your second row of donuts is absolutely the way to go. And after I watch this video, I talk to the team about it and they're gonna change the way they do things. So on all the future projects like this, we will be using a string. Got a lot of comments about good luck trying that in you fill in the blank because everybody across the US, you guys all have the worst ground in the world. Out here in Wyoming, it's gravy. There's no better place to dig a fence post hole than in Wyoming, which is an absolute lie. Let me tell you, this is one of the rare places in this area that it's good. If you went back and looked at the pile of dirt, even it's not rock free, but we do have a good heavy clay soil. I'll give it to you too, that if you're in really heavy rocky soil, this system is not for you. You need a good heavy soil or a clay soil. This works really well. And people ask me, well, how deep am I gonna have to pound my post? That really depends on how good your soil is. The looser the soil, the deeper you're gonna have to go. The tighter and harder and more compact the soil is, the shallower you can get away with. ASTM specifications require at least three feet for us, and so we follow that. Three feet's gonna be the minimum. I've heard of people in Florida going close to four and a half or five feet where they've got really sandy, loose soil. The best way to test that is drive a post three feet, see how well it holds up, shake it, see how easy it is to pull out. And if it pulls out too easy and you have a lot of wind, it's not deep enough. If you drive it four feet and then it holds up and you feel like you've got some good resistance there, then you're deep enough. If it never gets solid, this is not the right method for you. You need some of that surface area and that's where concrete's gonna come into place. If you've got really solid rocky soil or some of you guys might've seen the other video that we have on how to dig through rocky soil, that was done just two miles that way. I would never, ever, ever try and use this method in that soil. It's not gonna work. We're gonna move posts off the fence line. We're just gonna fight it. They're not gonna get tight because the rocks are gonna keep that soil from binding to the post. And so it's probably gonna be loose even if we do get it down to three feet, which we could actually get it down three feet. You've gotta have the right soil type for this to work. It doesn't work all the time and nowhere in the video did we say this is a be all end all, the only way to ever install fence again. This is just one of the tools in our toolbox that we use when the situation or when the circumstances are conducive to using it. So don't hear me say on anything, anything we do on any of our channels that that is the only way to do it and that's the only way you should ever do it. What we're doing is trying to provide you with more information about ways that may work for you that may be easier in your circumstance. But that's up to you, the professional or the person watching this to decide what's best for your area. One of the things we fought because this gate actually is open to the north, it's gonna hit a, have a lot of wind and we do double drive gates. So we ended up setting a sleeve. We need a void for that sleeve to go down in. And so they dug a hole to set that sleeve in and that was the only other hole that they dug. That's still cut down where we used maybe six bags of concrete, it was no big deal. Driving posts as a tool, it doesn't mean that we can drive every single post. If we have a utility conflict, we have to be very careful about either, either hydro excavating or hand excavating down to depth. And then because all that soil is loose, we can't just put the post in there and tamp it around there. It would never hold up. So that's when we have to use the concrete. So you've seen a lot of our other videos where we've driven posts and if you hit a rock, um, some of the stuff like you're seeing on the ground, if you hit a rock, sometimes it'll move just a little bit, but that's one of the things about the donut is they do allow you some adjustment if your post, if you drive that post in and it's nice and solid, but it's a little crooked, you can take some of that out with the donut. The other thing you can do is because it's pipe and if it's in good solid soil, you can actually bend the pipe plumb, which would be really easy. And we'll show you a tool at some point in time that we use to get posts straight if they driven crooked, but the bottom's in the right spot. Because once the bottom's set, it's easy to bend pipe right where you want it and you can't ever tell. So, but hitting little rocks like this, it's eventually it's gonna pound right through it and it'll be all right. Um, like I said, the really heavy river rock soil, like we showed you in the how to dig in rocky soil video, this isn't gonna work. I would never try it. So some rock is okay, a lot of rock is not okay. Not to say you couldn't get it down, but trying to get it tight is gonna be the biggest problem. It's gonna, it's, you'll get it to depth and it'll be loose. You'll be able to take the post and spin it. It'll maybe rock a little bit and that's not what we want. As you can tell, all these posts are still very solid. Uh, the flow's nice. He said a good flow. I've got no concerns. Wow, uh, what, you know, it'd be really nice if all that sun wasn't hitting us. That was another thing you guys said. That'll never hold up. I don't know if you guys were talking about this fence won't hold up to the sun. I think some people were trying to say that it'll never hold up to the sun, but in Wyoming, in the summertime, we get a crazy amount of sun. Our UV index is uh, pretty high, and we've got fences that are 20 years old, 
and have been using this vinyl and as long as you're using a good product there's no problems with the sun the key is use a good product the stuff that you're going to find at the big box store is the lowest common denominator it is not good product and they're doing that because it's cheap and people want to see a low price they know that so they're selling you something super thin and that doesn't necessarily have the right resin blend to make sure that it can hold up to the sun and not fade or get brittle over time and those things obviously one of the times that our fence is the most brittle would be in the winter time when we have all the crazy winds. So if we were gonna bust fences and they blow apart, it happens usually in the winter when the wind storms come up and we get big blizzards. I don't think one of the things Dan talked about being a benefit, and I think there were some comments about durability, but we have steel inside there now. So if we ever needed to, let's say somebody comes along here and smashes a post with their riding lawnmower and it does get brittle and we do break some stuff, which will happen. People will shuck rocks through them or whatever and we need to take it apart. If they break a post, that's the most expensive part of the entire fence, the most expensive part, because then you've got to pull all that concrete out. It takes the most time to replace. And I've got a post that's a mess and it's just the most difficult thing to replace other than replacing a rail or a picket, which is very easy. If I've got to pull posts out, it gets expensive. With this system, the nice thing is, is I can go back and I can pull some screws out, pull everything out, slide a new post on, and I don't have to dig a new hole, I don't have to mix new concrete, I don't have to wait for the concrete to cure. There's nothing like that. The steel post underneath should still be in perfect shape. I just need to replace the facade on the outside, which is really easy when you have a driven post system. So that's a huge benefit when it comes to making repairs on your fence. Uh, let's say that in 20 years, this fence is complete garbage, like some of you guys surmised it might be. The steel posts are still gonna be good underneath. I can come back and replace a complete fence and never have to replace any of the, do any of the excavation or repounding, which makes replacement cheaper. So think about that stuff. If you know anything about our cedar fences, that's why we won't use wood posts, is because the post is the most expensive piece to replace, and that's why we only use steel posts on cedar fences as well. So huge benefit to having steel in the ground versus having vinyl or wood or some other product in the ground. Uh, as far as repairs are concerned later on. Oh, yes, golly, yeah. Yeah, that's another thing you guys said. We don't like to work hard. I don't know what about this fence you guys have a problem with. Uh, well, I mean, other than everything. Other than all of it. What we got was we're trying to cut corners and we're not concerned about quality and nothing could be further from the truth. If we weren't gonna put our name on it and stand behind this product, we would never install it. When we install a fence as our company installs a fence, we're putting our name on that fence and we're gonna guarantee that it's good to go. If there's ever a problem with this fence and the homeowner calls us up and says, hey, you know what? Uh, that method you guys tried didn't work out. Guess what? They're gonna get a new fence and we're gonna pay for it. Chances are we'll reuse all the rails and everything and we'll reset the post, but that's not the case. They've been using this method in Canada for years. And the reason that they're doing that is because they have so much problem with the frost level and, and frost heave that they needed a different method because those big concrete cylinders were just getting shoved out of the ground by the frost. So people up north have been driving fences for decades. I know of a fence company in Madison, Wisconsin called Qualine Fence, and they have been driving every single fence post. If they have to set a fence post, they won't do it. They just flat won't come do your job. That's all there is to it. If they've got a poor concrete, they're just not gonna do it. And they've been doing that for decades. And the reason they do that is because of frost heave. They're doing fences 20 feet tall in solid wood privacy and getting them to hold up with driven posts. It has nothing to do with how solid it is. Think about the bridge decks and all the other things that engineers are using. They're using driven piles all the time in engineering. So using driven stuff, if done correctly, does not sacrifice quality at all. And in fact, it adds a lot of value to it. Not only do you get the benefit of the vinyl and all the qualities that it has, but we've got a steel stiffener in that post three feet up there. So to say that we're doing this to cut cost or cut quality is not at all the case. The money that we save on the concrete goes into the steel post and the adapters. So we don't save any money there. The money that we save on digging the hole, we end up spending on pounding the post. We save maybe just a little bit of time and effort on having to clean up all that dirt and all those spoils and figure out where to put them, but that's really the only place that we save money. And honestly, the concrete's cheaper than the steel and the donuts right now. So in the end, it's probably a wash cost-wise. But what it does is make us more effective and give the customer a really good solid product overall. And I guarantee you, we can come back here in 10 years and this fence will still be here looking exactly like this. And anybody that wants to come build fence with us, give me a call, drop us a note down below. We'll show you we work hard. We do a ton of fences all over Wyoming and we wouldn't have the customers we do if we didn't work hard and deliver a good product. I'm not sure why 
Exactly. Everybody thought, and I think it was Dan. It was Dan. So everybody seemed to think Dan drinks on the job. And uh, you know what? The funny thing is, is that we would never allow that. In fact, we have fired people for doing things like that. That is one of the quickest ways to get terminated. So we drug test very regularly. I can assure you that nobody on your project will ever be under any influence of any drugs because that puts my company at liability and we're just not going to do that. So Dan wasn't drunk, but do we like to have fun? Do we get high on life? You bet we do. We are high on life. Super high. Our drug is adrenaline and quality. That's our drug. Uh, so no, no drinking on the job. Uh, Dan actually doesn't drink. I don't drink at all, ever. Um, just a little something about me. Um, the other owner of the company doesn't drink at all, ever. So yeah, just not, it's not our company culture, sorry. I thought he was drunk because he was having fun? Uh, maybe you gotta change your culture because our culture is not to be, we don't have to be drunk to have fun. We have fun every day of the week and that's just who Dan is. Like me, I like to have fun. I don't know if you realize this, but we do kind of try and keep it a little bit lighthearted on this channel. We're trying to educate while entertaining. So no, Dan wasn't drunk. That's all I have to say about that. Guess what I found? If you ever find one of these, if you ever find one of these in their natural habitat, they don't look like this. They should be buried in the ground. I don't know who ripped this out, but it wasn't us because we didn't dig any holes with an auger. So we definitely did not rip that out, but that's a property marker. Kind of don't want to mess those up. But the only hole that was close to a property marker was that one right there and we hand dug that one you saw it on video and the rest of these were pounded so no augers ever went into the ground i think that the only thing i can really say 100 percent is is that we screwed up by not using a string i will give you guys that all day long the reality is, is we can't always make everybody happy but hopefully you learn a little bit of something even if it's how not to do it and you're entertained and if you if those two things are true then you're in the right place and until next time you have a good dang day.